It's a. Uh, it's something that'll change the world and human life as we know it. He knows. He's seen the light. When Monty talks, it's painful. <laughs> Monty, you have been so instrumental in uh, kind of pointing me in the right direction. And <laughs> it was about um, looking at your character defects and spirituality. Uh, it, it's the integration of clinical practices with uh, the 12 steps. It's an absolute pleasure. He certainly knows a lot of people. Uh, he's got a lot of energy. And sometimes when you don't have so much energy, he picks you up and carries you. Having the Monty man there certainly helps. This is one of the places that is about the business of the solution. The views expressed on this special broadcast of the Take 12 radio show do not necessarily reflect those of KHLT Recovery Broadcasting or its affiliates. KHLT is not affiliated with any particular 12-step fellowship. Now here's that guy who's getting less popular minute by minute, your host, the Multiman. Yes, indeedy. Welcome aboard, all you scallywags and scallywaggles of the recovery community, people who are in recovery, friends and family members of, and perhaps some of you who should be. Welcome aboard to the Good Ship Recovery here at Take12Radio.com on your internet dial, broadcasting to you from the studios of KHLT Recovery Broadcasting on the beautiful outskirts of of, uh, downtown Albany, Oregon. Uh, broadcasting uh, internationally and on the Graceful Living Network on AM and FM um, terrestrial stations throughout uh, the uh, the country, uh, primarily on the internet for you. Um, our website address, in case you're listening, <coughs> excuse me, uh, on a, a copy of the show or, or YouTube or something like that, is a take12radio.com. You can type in the number or just spell out the word. It'll take you to the same webpage. Our Email address is take12radio, and that's the number 12, at comcast.net. And uh, I, I want to talk to you just really quickly here, uh, give you my my little insight uh, about breaking stigma. Look at addiction is the number one health crisis in our nation, and recovery from it gets the least amount of attention, of attention due to stigma. And Take 12 Radio is about breaking that stigma. We are on our 11th year of broadcasting, and I want to thank each and every one of you that is tuning in and all our former listeners, if some of them are no longer listening, as well as our future listeners. Uh, Listen, you know, without you guys, who are we talking to? Thank you so much. Uh, I, I just appreciate you so much. It is absolutely vital that we get this message out there through media. Listen. Anonymity does not mean secrecy. Please, people understand that. If you're in a 12-step fellowship, it is your public relations policy that is based on attraction rather than promotion, not your personal stories. Eee, gas. Well, somebody, please stop telling people they can't tell their stories to the public. Uh, now, now there's, there's wisdom. We want to use wisdom, Right. Uh, and, and, you know, you don't, you don't want to say that you represent a 12 step fellowship because that would be wrong. Um, but you can share your personal story. People aren't going to know that recovery from a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body is possible if you hide in the basements of your churches and meeting halls because you don't understand the anonymity tradition. Uh, there's ways to be able to share your story without breaking that. And uh, we, we try to do our very best here to honor uh, the major 12-step uh, fellowships traditions here, but we're not affiliated with them. And, uh, but we try to honor them the, be- the best that we can. And I just want to let you know that if you have a story to tell and you would like to share that, please take the opportunity to go to our website, click on Be On The Show, fill out the form, and submit it. And we'll chat. Because we have celebrities, we have authors, we have clinicians, we have, we have CEOs, we have all that. But there's nothing more powerful than the personal stories of experience, strength, and hope. All right. I'm done with my rant. There you go. All right. My guest uh, this week is Michael Smith. He is the CEO of Chapter House. And I'm going to give you the website address right here, chapterhouserecovery.com. 
And if you'll go to that and bookmark that, I encourage you to do so. Uh, we're going to be talking about sober living. We're going to be talking about what makes Chapter House different than, than possibly other uh, other facilities. Uh, we're going to be talking about dual diagnosis and extended care and, and health and wellness and all this stuff uh, here with the CEO of Chapter House, Michael Smith. Uh, before we do that, though, let's get our first sponsor out of the way. We'll be right back. You don't want to miss this show. This is vital stuff, my friends. It really, truly is. We'll be right back. Free by the Sea is a drug and alcohol recovery center located in beautiful Ocean Park, Washington. This facility is amazingly gorgeous, but what's even more amazing is the integrity of the staff and the treatment provided for those wishing to recover from narcotic and alcohol addiction. The folks at Free by the Sea have a passion for presenting the solution to addiction for you or your loved one. To speak with an admission specialist, visit FreeByTheSea.com or call toll-free 800-272-9199. This place is simply amazing. When I first came to uh, Serenity Springs, I never thought I could stay clean and sober. And then after being through the 12 steps and getting closer to God and just learning how to live, you know, I can't imagine life with drugs and alcohol anymore. Introducing Serenity Springs Recovery Center, a fully licensed residential drug and alcohol dependence treatment center for men specializing in helping individuals with substance abuse problems. Addiction is a disease that deteriorates the body, punishes the mind, and destroys the spirit. Addiction needs to be attacked on all three of these fronts. They work the steps, they work them extremely hard. Finding God is a big part, and that's what they did for me. They gave me a life second to none. Residents live in a resort-style accommodations and are able to participate in numerous on-site activities. You know, golf and working out, playing basketball a lot. Serenity Springs is a unique facility that is committed to providing exceptional individual care in small group settings. They, they talk about life beyond your wildest dreams. I never thought that was possible for me, and today I'm living it. And uh, just being connected, guys are like my brothers, just a big family. At Serenity Springs, they want to make a life-changing investment into your recovery. For more information, contact their 24-hour admissions department at 386-423-4540 or visit their website at Serenity Springs Recovery. It's really amazing what's happened. I mean, it's, it's nothing short of a miracle. And have a little peace, just a little peace of mind. Give me some peace, peace of mind. Well, greetings, my friends. Welcome back to the show little peace of mind from Loggins and Messina there. Gosh, I love those guys. Listen, Michael Smith is my guest this week. Uh, Michael achieved sobriety at the age of 23 and has dedicated his life to helping others find recovery. As the director of marketing for a long-term treatment center specializing in chronic relapse, Michael became one of the leading industry advocates for abstinence-based recovery. I'm underlining that, folks abstinence-based recovery, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Michael was most recently the CEO of an extended care program for men in New England. He was a founding member of a national addiction conference and currently serves as a planning committee member for the largest addiction treatment conference group. He currently conducts the day-to-day -day operations, engaging with the residents throughout all aspects of life, development, recovery, lectures, and health and wellness curriculum. A real sense of his commitment to Chapter House occurs when family members and loved ones reach out to Chapter House and find Michael on the other end of the phone or conducting a tour of the property. Michael, welcome to the show, my friend. Hey, thanks, Molly. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, you, you uh, you've been doing this. You've been doing this stuff for, for a while. Uh, before we talk about uh, the the facility it, it itself, let me ask you. Um, in your travels, in your working with the recovery community, what has been the most challenging aspect of that, in your opinion? Well, you know, there's there's a lot of different aspects I can think of that all kind of come to mind all at once. If I could, if I had to pick just one, um, 
I think that uh, the biggest challenge really is really getting the families to see um, that this is a life and death errand. You know, right. and I think they they really believe that. Hey, you know, they've uh, especially with young adults. You know, just got a couple bumps in the road, and and yeah. just uh, think if you get the right job and the right relationship, you know, they will finally kind of get it um and so really working with with families and uh taking the time to really get them on board and and uh, allowing them to see that that recovery is an important part of making all that stuff become a reality that they so badly want do families many times have to do as much work or even more than the person that is in recovery yeah i mean there is uh and and, you know they all they they, it hasn't changed i don't think in in the history of of, uh treatment uh or lack thereof treatment of of addiction alcoholism it hasn't uh hasn't changed at all where they don't think they need to do anything at all and if the the loved one just kind of gets the help then then uh, every all will be well and so you know uh getting them, encouraging them, and, and getting them in the right place to where they, they start their own process. And it, sometimes it's just giving a referral to a therapist or sending, sending them to a 12-step program, you know, uh, is, is part of that process. But uh, the miracles really start to happen for that individual once they, you know, are able to do some of their own work as well, because uh, it's amazing how uh, it is such a family disease. Yeah, the, you, the founders of, 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 a, of a large twelve step program, you know, with their time, they addressed a lot of the the, the, the families and, and the loved ones, you know, early on in, in the history of twelve steps. So they they knew what they were talking about. And they knew it was a uh, important aspect. You, you you bet they sure did. Uh, and, and I've got to say that you're not doing this by yourself. Uh, your wonderful wife Heidi is very much involved in this. Explain that a little bit to our listeners. Yeah, I think it's it's uh, unique in some circumstances. I don't, I don't think uh, most husbands and wives think, you know, what we should do is open up a business together. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that uh, that's it at all. But uh, you know, it, it, we've had this great match. You know, my history also is that I wanted to be a, go to school to be a counselor and, and kind of get involved in the clinical side of things. And, and during that process, I found myself more on the business side of things, and I and I found this. Uh, well, texting as I was up in New England, uh, doing some really good clinical work and, and boy meets girl on treatment center campus, you know, and, uh, right. And we started to, to form a relationship. And, and from there, uh, you know, I was definitely the kind of go getter wanting to, 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 to start something. And, and she wanted to stay in her office and work with the, the clinicians and the, the patients and, and that sort of thing. Sure. Uh, and we've made this a reality where, uh, you know, I convinced her, uh, you know, <laughs> do some work, uh, <laughs> that we should do something together. And, and, um, and we've set out to do that journey over the past few months and, and it's been, uh, it's been really good. So I, I do the business side of things in the sense of, uh, kind of, I guess you, you call the non-clinical work, you know, the yeah. life development as well as the admissions and marketing and she, even though she does all that stuff really well, uh, she does the, all the, the therapeutic aspects of it down the, at the counseling center. Uh, so it, it's so far so good. It's been uh, it's been a good. I don't think that anybody uh, should just automatically do that after they put a ring on their finger and say their vows. But uh, you know, we knew where we were getting after being married for for uh, six years. You know. Mm-hmm. So. Well, and 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 she she really has. Uh you know, some, some kudos coming her way. I, I know she's very, probably very humble and, and isn't going to toot her own horn, so let me do that. Um, uh, Heidi uh, has become a trusted voice, author, and blogger uh, on treating individuals suffering from addictive disorders. She had a featured article in Addiction Professional Magazine about 2012 and 2014 and is currently a featured blogger. She has been featured on A&E's Intervention, as well as the National Geographic series, How Drugs Work. And in addition, Heidi has presented at the Cape Cod Symposium for Addictive Disorders, uh, the National Association for Addictive Professional, Addiction Professionals Annual Convention, the Texas Association for Addiction Professionals Annual Convention, and uh, it, it, the, well, the list goes on and on. So you guys are... are uh, are more than qualified to be doing what you're doing, and you're doing it as a team. I, and I think that's just marvelous. But uh, let, let me let me backtrack just for a few minutes to kind of qualify with you. Um, things weren't always going as well as they are now with you. True. Very much so. Very well, much. So. What was going well, on, man? If you were if you were to look at the opposite 
of the world. If you could, you know, take, you know, there's a saying in the 12 step community, you know, yell from jail to jail. Yeah. Uh, you know, I would definitely have been the jail and Heidi would have been the Yale, you know, <laughs> we are, we're definitely two different aspects. And, uh, yeah, I was, uh, you know, I'd be drug user at a young age as well as, you know, like to drink the, the, the clock round that, uh, yep. you know, uh, and, and that sort of thing. So that, that has always been the case. And, you know, my, uh, my story, you know, uh, would have been one of very sad when I sat down with a, a lot of treatment professionals because, you know, a single mother welfare, you know, and all the other kind of things go on and on. And, and, uh, you know, discovering recovery was not anything we talked about at the schoolyard while we were playing basketball, you know? Yeah. So, uh, it, that's, that's really been, uh, been a journey for me uh to come around and know that uh everybody deserves god's grace and freedom and that sort of thing and no matter where you come from how how little or much you have you know and uh i'm, I'm just glad i was desperate enough and a couple of times in my life to follow some direction to be willing and presented with an adequate solution you know you bet so it's been uh been a journey that's for sure well and, and, and were you one of those guys that came into your 12-step support meeting and said i'm going to be a drug and alcohol counselor or, or, or the ceo of a sober living home or i mean or, did, did you have those kind of dreams or no no there was nothing i really ever thought about i, I really uh kind of haunted me i, I there have been many other things in my life i wanted to do around business stuff you know after i kind of got woken up you know right uh spiritually uh, and uh, I just kind of stumbled upon this stuff and, and gave it a shot, and I, I kind of really got, you know, I really felt real strongly that, that we were kind of going in the wrong direction, to be honest with you, and, and I didn't, I really didn't have a lot of respect for the clinical side of things when I first, because I was, yeah, I'm a 12-step guy, and I believe this, that, and the other thing, and I didn't know that, you know, that there was crossover, and I didn't see a lot of value of, of that. You know, I saw some yeah. But um, it really opened up my eyes. It was a great education for me to really understand kind of where the science is around this stuff and how the spiritual aspect is. Uh, yeah, it's the ultimate goal, but there were some things that some people need to kind of get them there. And so that really opened up my eyes. And so I kind of went into the treatment industry because, A, it haunted me, and, B, I, I just felt like we were kind of going in the wrong direction. And I know so there's a lot of people that still feel that way, and, I'm sure there there's still that around, you know, all the different uh, medicines that we have that kind of float around and, and, and mm. that sort of thing, you know, yeah. with, especially young adult population. But uh, yeah, it was not, you know, I didn't walk, you know, walk through the French doors, walking out, talk to on, just look up the, st- the steps on the wall, go, yeah, that will work, and I want to become a drug and alcohol counselor. <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, you know, God is amazing, isn't he? I mean, I mean, check it out. You and I both, and and, I, and this is not bragging. This is just just. A, a statement of fact. Uh, look where we've come, and look look where we are today. Uh, you know, through the power of this loving God in our lives. I mean, you and I rub shoulders and know some of the the largest movers and shakers in the recovery industry. Uh, you know, we got people from like Rick Orsner from C4, people like Chris Schroeder from Afflicted and Affected, uh, Chris Raymer, the number one most downloaded AA circuit speaker in the world. Uh, Mar- uh, Mark Houston, who has now passed on, uh, Dr. Alan Berger, Gorski. I mean, I, some of these people, I mean, if you would have told me that I would have been friends with these people back in the day, I, I would have said, you're absolutely out of your mind, man. I mean, my agenda is, you know, to to go to college, party like a rock star, and then find somebody to marry that'll party with me. <laughs> <laughs> Look what we drank ourselves into. You know? I know. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Um, okay. Uh, Chapter House. Uh, ChapterHouseRecovery.com is the website, and you can follow the links, listeners, uh, on our uh, on our webpage uh, there, uh, directly under um, the title of, of the show on, on Friday's page. You can also follow it. You can, on a YouTube version, you'll see it pop up here. Uh, and I... I I really encourage you to go ch- go check it out. It, it's a beautifully done website. It's very simple. It's very user friend- friendly, and uh, man, what a, what a wonderful s- facility you guys have! So tell us about where this is located, and what this is all about, and why is it different? Well, that's the the million dollar question. I know that yeah. there's a lot of people around the country that are 
that are kind of catching the buzz on, on what we're doing down here. And I'm really excited about that. I've been so blessed and so fortunate. I want to say first off for the partners and people that have reached out that believed in Heidi and I and what we're doing here in our mission, right. because the response has been overwhelming. So I uh, thank you to, and they know who they are. You know, uh, they, those people don't want to necessarily be named, you know, uh, as I split, uh, as I speak, but they know who they are. And that, that's been a very fortunate thing. So we're very blessed, but we are, you know, we're a different kind of sober living experience, as it kind of says on that website. Uh, it's definitely uh, different, uh, high quality, that sort of thing. We're located down in uh, Dallas, Texas, just north in, the, in a city called Richardson. It's really, you know, uh, the suburb of, of Dallas. Um, and uh, we're, we're located by a, uh, you know, a bunch of colleges, which is a good thing for what we what we do. Uh, we're sit on a we're in a private neighborhood. You know, it's a 5,700 square foot home. Um, and it's located on a golf course, which is not anything I ever frequented, you know, in my drinking and drugging days. But it's it's a really, you know, the facility itself is, is done very dignified uh, living experience. For yeah. That, that get, get the chance to live there. We're small. You know, we're about 12 beds. We do have a certificate of occupancy from the city of Richardson, which is, is, is a, you know, means that we have some accountability there on the sober living side, you know, with, uh, inspectors and code people coming in, and, and it's pretty pretty in depth that process was uh, for us to get that, um, you know. And I know there's a lot of controversy in the sober living world around these kind of COs that are issued. I know in Costa Mesa there's a right. battle going on, and <laughs> there are a lot of people are afraid of yeah. you know kind of get getting up in there, um, yeah, yeah, you know. So, um, but I support you know. I, I think if you go you follow the code, you do what's right. There's nothing to be afraid of. Um, and that's definitely been our, our experience. Um, and so, yeah, we are, we're for that failure to launch. They're, they're, here's, here's what I discovered. I ran a, a, a large program up in, up in New England. Um, and what I discovered was there's about eight out of 10 guys could get out of a, a primary treatment center. You know, you name any, you know, primary treatment center around the country in 30 to 90 days in length and, and then get out and they, they go to their sober living facility and then two weeks they go and get that job and, and that sort of thing, you know? Yeah. But there's two out of ten guys that just can't seem to get it. They can't pull that off. It may be, you know, an anxiety issue, it may be a life skill issue, which generally it is, you know, that life development stuff. You know, you know, they've never worked the steps, they're not you know, there's all these aspects of, of that. And so there's two guys or that's who we work with. We work with those guys. So we have our, our silver living, the beautiful silver living I just described. We have the other aspects make us different instead of a, you know, which is nothing wrong with this, but we don't we don't have a, a guy that's a house manager that may be six months sober, you know, there. We have a staff. We have people that I'm there, you know, Monday through Friday, eight to five with another guy, an ops guy. We have shifts that come in. We people that work shifts. We have an overnight shift, you know. Um, so we really have a lot of supervision. So low ratios, you're talking one to three. You know, each guy's case manager, you know, one out of, uh, you know, one case manager every, uh, you know, three guys is, is a huge ratio. Yeah. Another thing that makes us uh, different is some of our focus on health and wellness. For some reason, God, God's reason, right, really, we get a lot of athletes. So we don't, we don't, really, see there's something wrong with, with some of the, yeah, we have three baseball, two baseball players and a golfer with us right now. And all the other guys are really active. So for, they, they're mostly in college age. So, um, which is really cool because we, we do sports specific training. So they're not going down just to get in a gym membership and, and they're going to the gym, which a lot of guys can pull off and that's fine. Um, but we actually have sports specific training at, at a place here local in Dallas. As you can imagine, it's really good and the people know what they're, they're doing because they work with a lot of athletes, a lot of athletes that go there in the off season. And, the, and we also have, uh, you know, we don't definitely have a nutritionist. We also do a lot of nutritional work. So you know, how to cook meals, quick, healthy meals. Uh, we could do a grocery store shop with, with a place called the Cooper Clinic down here. Uh, and they bring their people in, and they take our guys out, and they grab grocery carts, and they go, you know, show them what to buy and what's healthy and that sort of thing. So we have a real good balance on the health and wellness aspect, as well as, you know, the obvious 12-step immersion piece, which is obviously what we're, we're trying to get them home to. Um, but, uh, you know, we really... You know, I have a movie curriculum. And we just do a lot of, here's the thing. Let me just sum it up like this. You know, when I, when I talked about the house and I talked about, you know, we also have a game room. If you go on the website, it's really cool. It's right. themed with a pinball machine, a pool table, and an arcade machine. So we take we take games.
gaming, and we bring it to another level as well, where it's not ice flip gaming, it's community gaming, you know? Um, we do a ton of board games. Yahtzee's the big thing. But, but here's what we've got. What I, what I believe we've created, and it came from the feedback of professionals and families, what I've heard in our experience over the years, you know? I still feel like a baby in this thing, even though 10 years in, you know, and I've been sober for 12. Um, we've got a great balance of the seriousness of the illness which they're afflicted with, right? It's along with the fun of recovery. And that's really what we got going here. We have a lot of fun, but we also do a lot of work uh, in recovery. And so um, I think that's important for that young adult. You know, it's really, really key. And so when we do all the stuff, when we do all the wraparound services and everything that we talked about, we start to unpack who the individual is. And that's where the launch phase comes in. So it's called landing, launching, living. Is our process landing, not launching. launching, and living? Yes. And so, in that in that process, that launching phase is really then putting on their big boy pants and discovering who they are. And we, we really focus a lot in education and how to mm-hmm. get them get them get some education so they can get a great job and be self supporting through their own contribution. So sure. We take that flow. It's part time work a part-time school, and they do that for a little while, and, and they get their sea legs under them, right? Uh, we start to move to that, that third stage where they they start to focus on independent living by going to full-time school or, or full-time work. Or, you know, because some guys do come in. They may be 23, 24, but they've got a four-year degree and run, you know, working in, in their, their desired job. And, and so um, we get them in that independent living of part-time, part-time, or full-time, one or the other. Um, and they do that for a while. And what my goal is, which is, is, is what my promise is when I talk to families, is I want to get them on. When they graduate, when they leave our place, they are on the path to where they're not on their parents' dole for the rest of their life. You know, <laughs> that they'll have some money saved. We use the life business and energy curriculum, you know, and generate yeah. change and really kind of unpack that whole aspect of it as well. So through the three stages, to get them where they're on that path or there, hopefully, where they can go out and fresh their own apartment or have their own apartment, you know, at least get the, the first and the last, right? Right, and, uh, right. That sort of thing. And so that's really in, in important for me. Because I saw so many people go through programs, I see so many go around where they leave and it's like, what's really changed? You know, do, do they have the education or do they have a job that, that's going to allow them to self support And And uh, so there's that aspect of it, you know, uh, which is, I think, uh, one of the main components that separates us. Well, okay, so you, you've made it pretty clear that you are a lot different than many sober living uh, homes, houses, facilities. Uh, I want to touch on that a little bit. Uh, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, um, I'm, I'm going to voice my overly opinionated opinion about sober living. Uh, and, and, uh, I want, I want to talk about, uh, the dual diagnosis piece too. Uh, so folks don't go away more with my guest, Michael Smith, CEO of chapter house in the Dallas, Texas area, the city of Richardson. When we return, don't go away. As men and women who have recovered from utterly hopeless states of addiction ourselves, we know all too well what it's like to battle addiction daily. We are Origins Recovery Centers. Here at Origins, we have taken that which we have learned along the way, excised anything unhelpful and unnecessary, infused it with the latest medical research and innovative therapeutic methods, and created what we know to be the absolute gold standard in substance abuse treatment. And Origins provides the most preeminent aftercare and relapse prevention program available in the United States. For a free confidential clinical assessment, call toll-free 888-843-8935. That's 888-843-8935. Origins, delivering real solutions for real families. Hey there, it's Monty Meyer from Take 12 Recovery Radio. Well, I'd like to take this opportunity to let you know about a brand new service being provided to those of you in the Willamette Valley and surrounding areas of Oregon. It's the ARS program, Addiction Recovery Services, being made available Tuesdays and Thursdays from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. at Oak Creek Christian Center, located at 5775 Columbus Street Southeast in Albany, Oregon. 
If you or a loved one are living with addiction issues, such as chemical dependency, alcoholism, opiate addiction, pornography, sexual addiction, eating disorders, or even codependency issues, we are here to help you. Here at ours, we have resources available that you may not be aware of that can help you or your loved one recover from a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. We offer experience, strength, and hope as we have been there ourselves and feel it imperative to assist you in obtaining the help you need to begin to experience the life you were meant to and created to enjoy. Well, perhaps you are not personally afflicted by any form of addiction, but you know and love someone who is. You've tried everything and feel at a loss as to what to do next to help. May I encourage you to pick up the phone today and call us here at 541-926-7981. You can call Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. to schedule an appointment with our Addiction Resource and Support Department. You don't have to belong to a church or even believe in God to take the advantage of our services. All you need is a willingness to seek help. That number again, 541-926-7981. That's 541-926-7981 to schedule an appointment. We look forward to hearing from you. And remember, you don't have to go through this alone. So do you get a clue, listeners, that I like Loggins and Messina? <laughs> Love those guys. Featuring bumper music for this show, Loggins and Messina. Um, okay, Michael Smith is the CEO at uh, Chapter House, chapterhouserecovery.com uh, in Richardson, Texas, uh, in the uh, Dallas, uh, Texas uh, area. Uh, one of the things that just irks my cookies is when I see sober living homes that um, th- there's no recovery going on. They, they're 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 you know filled with a bunch of guys or gals, and you know uh, there's a whole bunch of them here in town in in the Albany Willamette Valley uh, of Oregon, and they're you know the 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 men's homes they're servicing girls on the weekends. Um, most of them don't don't attend any meetings. I mean, there's there's nothing going on. They're self governed, which uh, I you know I I get the I get the philosophy behind it, but it's like how's that working for you? Um, and you know it is, and you know as well as I do how challenging it is to get a conditional use permit and then have that approved, and then end up having a flop house for a sober living facility, right? Yeah, it's uh, there's a there is a lot of work in that. And there's a whole other aspect of this where the use permits are actually go against some of the federal fair housing. <laughs> um, I think that a lot of people don't even know the law that well. And I'm by no means an expert, expert right? It, but I definitely know that I know what it says and what it doesn't say to to a degree to make I guess make it dangerous. But yeah, yeah there is a. Uh, there's a whole different aspect. I guess there's a nut for every wrench, is, is what it said. Uh, the saying goes, but uh, you know, it, it, there's some work that goes into to it as well. You know, and you just want, you know, here's what I think most of the, 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 the municipalities want and the government want. They just want people to be safe. You know, right? And, and that sort of thing. Um, and and so you know, it's. Uh, you know, unrelated people. I'm also, it almost sounds like it's not constitutional. Like, you can't have, like, you know, I, I can get very libertarian in some aspects, like, you know, like, well, it's my house I can do with it. I get that. You know, people get real fired up about that, and I can see that. Yeah. yeah but, you know, we just, you know, we just need people to be safe. They're not going to. I just lost you. I lost you there for a minute there, buddy. Okay, so. No, nope, I'm losing you again. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Back. Yeah, you're back. All right. So I get that aspect of, of the whole deal, you yeah. know, but it, it's just be safe, you know? 
Yeah, yeah, and I do, and so, so, so I get excited. I really do, in, in, in a positive way, um, when I hear about facilities like uh, Chapter House. I mean, because you know, whether it's treatment facilities, whether it's sober living, uh, whether it's IOP, wh- whatever it is, you know, there are people that that bless their heart, their their hearts in the right place but they don't know what they're doing. There are people that know what they're doing and they're doing it wrong. And then there are people that are doing it right. And I'm not saying perfectly, but I'm saying that, that they're doing it right. And, uh, when I, when I looked into chapter house, I got excited because there's a lot of gloom and doom out there. There's a lot of people saying, well, you know, this thing's getting worse and, and, you know, the programs are watered down and, and this and that and everything. And the, although some of that is true, there's a lot of good news out there, too. And folks like you and, and Heidi and what you're doing uh, really encourages me, Michael. Well, we, we want to be there, you know, for that. Uh, you know, just, again, it's like there's so many aspects of this thing where, we're fighting a disease, and I think, uh, I, and I, I know I do sometimes, yeah. like, oh, is it really life and death? Yeah, yeah, no kidding, no joke. Like, this is life and death. And, like, we would just want to use, like, best practices of what works out there. And that doesn't mean just in, like, the clinical sense. It means, like, the life set. Like, you know, this is all about, you know, using what works best for most. And uh, it seems to that we put together something that, that does that uh, from that perspective as well. And, and um, you know, there is, you know, there are people out there uh, that get this thing is is spiritual in nature. You right. know, uh, ultimately, it, it, it's all about that solution. But there are the, we're going to guide them through a process in which they're you know they've got other stuff. Like let's talk about that. Like let, let's 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 go on and, and get the help that you need for some of that as well. But uh, yeah. we want to we want to bring you home. You know, to us and join us on this road. You know. Yeah, you bet. You you bet. Now. Now let's talk. I, I I wanted to talk about this dual diagnosis thing. Now now believe it or not, there are people out there that don't know what that means. Um, we we know today that ninety nine point nine percent of the cases out there of people that are actually alcoholic or uh, narcotic addicts um, have a dual diagnosis going on. I mean, there's there's mental health issues. There's there's issues of trauma. Um, you guys address that at Chapter House, true. Yeah, we are able. The one huge thing that also makes us different, and we didn't touch on this as much as in the, when we kind of talked around about it, but uh, is that we have a counseling center. It's called Chapter House Counseling Center, mm. uh, where Heidi is, and so uh, we're able to address a lot of the the, the other parts of the ism that make it up. Uh, and you know, dual diagnosis. I guess uh, when I was in school, it was kind of an archaic word. I guess the, the appropriate term now is you know co-occurring. And I'm sure the wall co-occurring yeah. helps, but yeah. And so, and and uh, so we're able to really uh, look at it as, as, in that sense as well. We're able to. You know, cause a lot of guys need structure. If you're talking about the, the other facilities out there, and that's you know that may work again eight out of ten guys, but. There's some guys that have other things that are kind of going on that, uh, yeah. you know, need the structure in the living environment as well as, you know, being taken down to outpatient or IOP uh, and, and having the time, first off, to get kind of all the medicine right, uh, but also, you know, the therapeutic, you know, interventions yeah. that need to take place and, and the one-on-one therapy and the group therapy as well. So. I, at the beginning of the show, I emphasized abstinent-based. Explain to the listeners what that means for uh, Chapter House. Well, after base is what it sounds like. I mean, there, you know, it's uh, when we do work uh, in the field. You know, there's there is uh, there's a lot of medicines out there that I, I think are well intentioned that, that are very good. I think uh, for detox protocols, mm-hmm. uh, as well as if an individual here, don't get me wrong. Like if you're 55 years old, you're sticking a needle in your arm, or you're, you know, you've been to, you've tried working 12 steps, and you've tried a place like Chapter House and all the other wonderful treatment centers out there, by all means, like, geez, if you, if you want to die, you know, like, yeah. go ahead and, and, and get on, you know, one of those, you know, the other drugs that are out there, you know, and uh, there's, there's a few of them out there, uh, by all means, give that a shot, you know, but 18, 19 years old, 
is uh, is it crazy if someone spends the life of taking a prescription or standing in line at a dispensary for getting a shot in your back for the rest of your life? Like, what is the freedom in that? Yeah. You know, but um, here's the thing about when you're talking about dual diagnosis as well, you know, the here's how we really are able to unpack, you know, a, a, a diagnosis uh, and uh, for the individual, for them to come to it themselves along with all of the other you know, people surrounding that individual and the recovery, you know, oriented system of care is the term they use. Uh, is that like the effective treatments for like clinical, uh, you know, depression or anxiety aren't effective, you know, for them, but the spiritual ones are. Like, I mean, that's the real how we can really get differentiate if they have a real diagnosis of, of what's going on, or if it just looks like that. Because a lot of times. For a young person, developmentally, as well as using drugs to combine those two things, it will look like a lot of other things besides what it really is. You know, yeah. it will show up as manic, it will show up as anxiety, it will show up as depression, along with all the guilt and shame that we kind of carry along with us. You know, you combine those things, of course it's going to show up, but, you know, we're able to see people wake up because we're starting to, you know, we treat it spiritually and they get better, you know. Yeah. Um, and so that's a beautiful thing to watch as well. And of course, there's some guys that are going to need, you know, uh, medicine because they have that, you know, the true right. diagnosis. But it's definitely over, as we've known, it's, it's over uh, diagnosed and even more so in the younger generations. You just, you just want to throw a, a pill at it. And they want it. I mean, that's yeah. what they want. Everyone just hope that they can just take a pill. But you know where that ends up, end you know, separate. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it does, and, and and I'm I'm on the same page with you with that. I, I'm not so sure that we know enough yet, um, you know, around things like Vivitrol and Suboxone and and Norcan and all that stuff. I, I I don't know. I just, you know, I've got mixed mixed opinions about it. I certainly don't want to see anybody OD. Um, if we can help prevent that, let's let's do that. I mean, let's let's get them staying alive and then we can work with them um but uh you know it, it's got its place it's, it's going to be interesting to see how this pans out in the next uh several years with treatment facilities and medication and so forth i, I think we're going to be a, a bit surprised on some of the effectiveness and a bit disappointed on some of the the um uh, failed experiments to tell you the truth but but we'll have to see we really will uh, I've talked to a lot of doctors and I've talked to psychiatrists, and one aspect they never look at is that social aspect. If I give you yeah. a prescription that separates you from other people and the collectively as a whole, you know, 12 step programs are absence based, you're not, you don't fit in there. You think you're different. And so what you end up in, again, is really alone. And here's the other thing is that, so, you know, and, and this goes with any type of medication. I mean, you're telling somebody, that has a, a problem with not taking medication appropriately, and right. you're going to hand them over a prescription, and you're going to think they're actually going to do that? I mean, what in, what, in, what in the world makes you think they're actually going to be able to pull that off? I'm not saying that someone can't, right. but the right. majority won't be able to pull that yeah. off. They'll be selling it and doing whatever they do. I mean, that's what's going on here. And so, you know, there, there's, there's some good, there's pluses and minuses to everything, but I just, you know, I'm with you. I, I'll be interested to see how this whole thing pans out. I don't know if they get to the point where they just, you know, inject something in you. I don't know. I, I don't know, brother. One of the things that cracks me up is, is, is the directions on the side of a, a prescription, especially opiate based pain medication where it says, you know, use, use as needed. I mean, I'm like, you're giving me that. Cause I'm telling you, man, I need it all the time. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but you know, and here's, here's, here's the thing. And you really touch on it. Well, it is there are people that need medication and they're, they're, they're outcast in some of our 12 step support meetings, um, by people that don't know what they're talking about. There are people that need medication. Um, and, and, and to say to somebody, well, you know, if you're on, um, uh, if you're on this and that, or you're taking this and that medication, you're not working a a uh, valid recovery program. I, I don't know that that that's a wise thing to say. Yeah. Well, yeah. absolutely. I, I think that we got to go back to 
some of the founding materials that are out there. And if you're listening to this and, and you have that, you know, position on it, you may want to check out uh, one of the, the legendary books, the blue one, uh, and look at page 133. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, it's pretty clear it says the words now about health. And so it, it definitely has some stuff in there. If you're a clinician, you're a recovery or not, I think it's a great book to look at and uh, use as a, as a manual on some of this stuff. But it's pretty clear that the world kills a lot of people, you know, that are that are uh, well-intentioned and, and there are things out there. Yeah. Um, I don't know what that brings up for them, but, you know, I, well, I don't have any opinion on uh, that sense of when you're, if you're sitting in a 12-step meeting across from me, you know, bop to a drop, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. Hey, what's, what's Psychology 101? Well, yeah, it's on the website. So uh, it was a play on, uh, you know, on some of the stuff that's out there. We kind of wanted to make it make it sound a little chic yeah. for uh, the young <laughs> users and that sort of thing. It's a page on the website that actually has a prescription from a co-founder of Alcoholics Anonymous, uh, uh, Dr. Bob, and it has an image of that. So it's kind of a cool thing. That was an original file that we came across. But it really is the um, outline of the ASAM's definition of uh, the disease, of addiction, uh, and uh, along with some of, uh, you know, uh, the information from, uh, from the book Alcoholics Anonymous that also plays directly into that. And so you've got a scientific, modern-day definition along with the definitions and many different definitions that kind of come all together to uh, really play in exactly what they're saying. So... Uh, it's, it's kind of a neat thing that we kind of discovered when I read uh, ASAM's definition. I said, wow, this is pretty good, and it, it sounds great par with uh, the book Alcoholics Anonymous. And, uh, and I was able to, to kind of put that together and uh, tie that all together. So, All right, all right. So, okay, um, somebody is interested. Somebody's listening right now. They have a loved one, or perhaps they're interested and they want to talk to you more, what's the procedure in uh, getting into uh, Chapter House? Well, it is a phone call. I generally answer most of the calls when I'm able to, if not run a group. If, if not, you know, uh, I'll leave a message. But here's what it looks like. I, I can tell you the ideal person that's a great fit for us if you haven't put that together is a young adult, uh, 18 to 25. Our average is about 24. We go up to 30. Um, and sometimes a little bit higher than that, depending on their maturity level, right? Yeah. You can all be uh, you know, big kids still with a number that's really high. Um, you know, 18 to 30, 18 to 25, uh, young adult man, um, you know, with probably perhaps a little bit of school experience, um, you know, any really any uh, substance abuse issue, if it be uh, drinking or drugs or both all at the same time. Um, post treatment, had some primary treatment experience uh, in the past. Uh, uh, motivated or resistant, we, we do pretty well with either of those two. Uh, and then we, uh, we, from there, you know, with the initial phone call, we go on to do an assessment. You'll you'll talk to Heidi uh, for the clinical aspect of it. Uh, she she does that, and then uh, we make all the other arrangements and, and pickups and, and that sort of thing. So um, that's really. Uh, procedure in that show. And, and you don't have to be from Dallas to take advantage of your program, true? That is a fact. We, and we actually prefer people from, from uh, you know, uh, great distances because it really gives them, you know, there's this whole thing, yeah. you know, it's like a geographical cure. Well, you know, if you're going to do a geographical for help, it's a, it's a different thing. You know, a lot of magic can happen in that sense. So, yeah, we, we allow anybody from, from anywhere in the world uh, to come to our program. We actually work very well with local people, which is a huge difference in a lot of the programs that I've worked for. And we, we, we do like to work with locals because we're able to really work with the families even more so. And, uh, and they don't just walk off property and go home. It's kind of interesting. They're also a big city, but, um, you know, uh, it's, uh, we do a lot of anybody from all over the place. You know, if you're working for a primary treatment center and think of it, they give us a call and we'll, well, I, I'll tell you what, I, I lived in Houston for a short time. Uh, I lived in what, I don't know if it's still called the Montrose District or not, um, but that is the district that I was in. It was a very seedy area. 
Uh, boy, it, I, I sure could have used something like this back then. Uh, and so I, I just want to tell folks that, look, at, you know, there are, a, there are a lot of things that you can do. Don't freak out about, well, you know, I'm not rich. I can't take care of this, you know, this and that. It, it's more what you're able to do. I mean, what you're willing to do, not what you're able to do. Right, Michael? Absolutely. Willingness is definitely an action. Yeah, yeah. So, so do you guys take insurance? Are you privately funded? How's that go? Yeah, we're a private pay facility. The sober living is uh, they at the counseling center that we work with. And just so you got everybody else knows, the counseling center is not exclusive to the chapter house people. It just has the same name. It basically sees a lot of people from the public. Uh, so if you're looking for counseling services as well, please give us a call. We do have a psychiatrist on staff, like no joke, sits in an office, you know, for four to five hours a week. Yeah. Um, and so that's another huge benefit uh they do take insurance down there and also uh private pay um and that sort of thing so yeah yeah you bet well excellent my friend uh folks the website is chapterhouserecovery.com you can follow the links uh here on uh take12radio.com uh please make a note of it bookmark it uh please give them a call uh and uh, if if nothing else Send them an email. Give them a call and, and tell them that you're praying for them, that you're thinking about them. Uh, and let me tell you something. This kind of work, a lot of times, it just it's draining. And a simple email, a simple note on Facebook or, or, or a phone call that just says, thank you guys for contributing so much to a hurting world, um, that, can mean, that can mean so much. Uh, to to folks like Michael and Heidi. It it really can. So I just encourage you to do that. Uh, Michael, if somebody wants to make a donation to uh, Chapter House, can they do that? We got got a private-run facility. Me and my wife took out our life savings, everything, to get this thing going. We definitely, what I really need is volunteers. Uh, we do. We have a huge volume. There's so many, so much of this I don't get to touch on always, but right. we do need volunteers. Uh, if you're local, to come in. If you're ever in Dallas, we have a huge need to have people, you know, manpower there. To, if your loved one died from the disease, or you you're a professional working in the field, not necessarily in, in treatment field, but in your own profession, we yeah. definitely have time uh, that we, we would set aside for you to kind of explain that. Uh, and donation of... Uh, you know, of any other uh, services or goods or anything like that, we could always use that sort of thing uh, sure. for sure. So if you have some, some clothes or anything like that, uh, non-perishable items, we can always use as well. We do big, huge community meals together. And so, uh, yeah, really, if you're ever, if anybody's ever in town, you're a professional, you're a family member, you're ever here and you want a tour, feel free, fill up the form on, or on uh, the website or give me a call. I'm more than glad to entertain you and bring you by and, and show you what we're doing. Uh, and, uh, it looks beautiful online. Everybody tells me it's even more beautiful in person. So. Well, yeah, and I'm and I'm sure it is. So, landing, launching, and living at uh, chapterhouserecovery.com. You can rewrite, rewind this show, uh, download this show, burn it on a CD, do whatever you want with it. Just share it with somebody, please. Uh, Michael, in the last couple of minutes we have here, any closing thoughts? You know, I just, I just want to say that, you know, that a lot of, there's a lot of good places out there. There's a lot of good sober livings out there. Do sure, there is. Do your homework. Ask them, you know, a lot of questions around what their, you know, what their operation is, Ron, how that's done, how, you know, what the yeah. staff to, to, to resident ratio is. If you're, if you're needing primary treatment and detox, please go and, and get that help. This, this disease doesn't seem like it's going anywhere. Uh, I'm really, truly honored to be a part of this. I never thought that those words would ever come out of my mouth. And again, I just want to reiterate that I'm, I've been humbled by the response we've gotten from the, the, the treatment community and the recovery community and all the volunteers that we already have going in there, you know, four times a week, sharing the message for these guys in their own way. And uh, it's, it's just been a, a wonderful show. I really appreciate, Monty, that you reached right out in the midst of, you know, uh, everybody else kind of been reaching out and uh, it, it allows me to believe that we're really on to something. So uh, thank you for having me and uh, it's been great. 
A- absolutely, Michael, and you're welcome back anytime. Maybe next time we can get Heidi on too. Uh, you guys have just been swamped with work. Uh, listen, you know, folks, we're talking about the number one health crisis in our world, and man. There's just an enormous amount of work to be done. I congratulate both you, Michael and Heidi, uh, on the work that you're doing. It it means so very much to so many people. Uh, Thank you for coming on the show and taking the time to do that, my friend. Thank you. Appreciate it, Bonnie. You bet. Okay, Michael, don't hang up. Stay on the line. Uh, Friends, chapterhouserecovery.com is the website. Please take a look and uh, listen Here's the thing. Do something now that'll make the person you will be tomorrow proud to have been the person you are today. Just think about that, would you? Until our next broadcast, this is the Monty Man along with a Michael Smith, and we're wishing God's perfect serenity for you. Bye-bye now. This has been a broadcast of KHLT Recovery Broadcasting. Kitty, 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 kitty.